This is the sound of a black hole. Or so claims NASA. That's right, this is the work of the most well-established space agency. So it has to be real, right? But hang on a second, if you're thinking what I'm thinking, yeah, nothing can escape a black hole, right? Not even the fastest thing, light. So how can sound? And then you have all of that vacuum of space between us. Doesn't sound need to propagate through some kind of medium? So how exactly does this work? Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou. Let's get to the bottom of this and talk about the sound of black holes and more generally, the sound of space. Yeah! We've heard it countless times. That's the sound of space, or at least according to those in the film industry, those in charge of our sci-fi blockbusters. It's also not uncommon to hear this. Or even this. But in reality, space should sound like this. To understand why, we need to know how sound works. Sound is a mechanical wave. It's generated when an object vibrates and causes the molecules around it to vibrate as well. The surrounding molecules are a medium, such as air, water, or even something solid through which the vibrations are transmitted from the source of the sound to the listener's ear, where they're interpreted as different sounds. In contrast, space is a vacuum, almost entirely devoid of matter. Without a medium in the vast expanses between stars and planets, there's no molecules to vibrate, to bump into each other. And thus there's no way for sound waves to propagate. This lack of transmission medium is why space is silent, at least in the traditional sense understood by human perception. But despite this silence, scientists have found a way to listen to space phenomena by translating the inaudible signals from the cosmos into forms that we can perceive. Sonification takes complex astronomical data, like the light patterns emitted by a nebula, or the vibrations around a black hole. And then translates them into sound. By assigning different pitches and volumes to various aspects of the data, scientists can create a kind of cosmic music that reveals the hidden sympathy of the universe. It, it is music, my spark is music. I so for example, higher temperatures might be translated to higher pitches, whilst lower temperatures might be lower tones. Similarly, rapid changes in the data could be translated into faster tempos or more complex melodies. NASA has a whole library of sonifications of astronomical images where the brightness and the positions of different pixels are assigned different pitches and volumes. I'll put a link to them down below if you want to check them out. But these sounds are not only useful for scientific analyses, but they also make the cosmos more accessible to the general public and to people with visual impairments. What we were hearing from this black hole was just that, the visual image translated into sound and not the actual sound itself. But there is actually a better way to represent the sound of a black hole, and you've probably already heard it. That's right, through gravitational waves. 
Gravitational waves are ripples in space-time caused by some of the most cataclysmic events in the universe, such as the merging of two black holes or with a neutron star. These ripples, though not sound waves themselves, they are waves and they do carry information about the origin and the nature of gravity itself. Gravitational wave detectors like LIGO pick up the distortions in space-time caused by these waves and we can plot them as a wiggle on a graph. But we can also use sophisticated algorithms to extract out the key details. Similar to the sonification of an image data, specific features in the gravitational wave data can be mapped to sound characteristics. So for example, the increasing frequency as black holes spiral closer into each other is translated into a rising pitch and the intensity of the waves is reflected in the volume changes. So even though this sound of a black hole as conveyed by gravitational waves is not sound in the traditional sense, since sound as we know it cannot propagate through the vacuum of space, Hearing the sound of a black hole through gravitational waves is much more than an auditory experience. It is a direct observation of vibrations in the fabric of the universe itself. So actually that's not all quite true because space isn't entirely empty. It's actually filled with a thin soup of charged particles called plasma. These particles can whip back and forth, generating electromagnetic waves. Instruments like NASA's Van Allen probes can detect these waves, which are typically beyond the audible range of a human, and then translate them into audible sounds. This allows scientists to hear the whispers of plasma around celestial bodies, a process known as electromagnetic eavesdropping. Electromagnetic eavesdropping provides an invaluable insight into the invisible phenomena that shapes our solar system. An example is for studying the plasma waves within the Van Allen radiation belts, two donut-shaped regions of charged particles trapped by our Earth's magnetic field. But it's important to note that this only really works with things that are quite nearby because the signal is otherwise too weak to pick up right now. But we can actually also see sound in faraway objects like galaxy clusters. Galaxy clusters, whilst very vast and sparse, they actually contain a huge amount of hot gas that can act as a medium for sound waves. This gas can be disturbed by various events like shock waves from supermassive black holes. And these will generate pressure waves that travel through the medium. A prime example of this is from Chandra X-ray telescope observations of the Perseus cluster, where cavities created by jets from the central black hole will push against the surrounding gas. And this will generate sound waves that ripple outwards, just like the patterns you would see from throwing a rock into a pond. The detection of these ripples then provides direct evidence of the sound waves propagating through the intracluster medium. Anyway, there you have it. Turns out that you can detect sound in space, despite it being a vacuum. But all of those fancy sonifications, well, they are the ultimate fakes. They do sound pretty good though. Thank you so much to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.